Hello everyone and welcome to the world of the International Fab Talks. We are so happy and glad to connect with you every single day. We have lovely people across the world joining us from different walks of life. It's always a pleasure to connect with people with who have beautiful minds, who have a lot of experiences in their lives and who are ready to share it with us. That's what makes us join, bond and you know, connect with the right kind of celebrities and guests every single day. And today we are very lucky and honored to have the special presence of our celebrity and guest. He's here with us. He is Mr. Vijay. He is Mr. Vijay Pandit joining us all the way from Madhya Pradesh. We'll get to know about his journey, celebrate his life on the International Fab Talks. Join us friends to welcome our celebrity today. Hello, sir, and welcome. Thank you for being with us. Hello, ma'am. How are you? Fine. Thank you, sir. We are very honored and happy to have you here. You come across as a warm gentleman, down to earth and very polite. We'd love to know more about you, your thought process and celebrate your journey on this platform. Yeah. Yeah. I also feel gratified to be in your company, to be right. honest. Thanks. And uh, uh, to know about me, yeah, you said rightly that I come from Madhya Pradesh, but my place of origin is Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir. So we are, we are Kashmiri migrants or Kashmiri pundits, whatever people say to us. And it's a long journey before the exodus. We used to live in Kashmir. Now, at present, I live in Indo, Madhya Pradesh. Yes. So I have a beautiful memory of Kashmir as well as other parts of India. I have been to Hyderabad. I have been to other people. So with your permission, I go ahead and share your profile and then we begin the session. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. My dear friends, it's a honor and a privilege as well to share the profiles of our celebrities and guests. And today we have Mr. Vijay Pandit, who's joining us all the way from Madhya Pradesh. Basically, he is from Kashmir. Allow me to share his profile, friends. Yes, dear friends, sir is into the healthcare industry. Like he's a healthcare professional. He's a wonderful author, a great YouTuber and a content creator, as the, uh, to put it very precise, a content creator, a great motivational speaker, and he loves his country and he wants to live with freedom and he wants to live in the place where he was born. So we'll get to know more about his journey. Uh, let, us, let me add a few more points about Sir. He was born in Kashmir, he's a Kashmiri Hindu, but very sadly, he's a refugee in his own country. That's what uh, he says. And this is really unfair when somebody has to be a refugee in their own country. So let's speak about it as to what happened and why does Sir uh, feel uh, being a refugee in his own country. Let's get to know about it more deeper. Sir has completed his MBA. Sir has worked in creative fields such as in the advertising industry as an advertising executive. Later on, Sir joined the financial company as well. He worked with herbal and allopathic medicine. Uh, our medicinal companies, you could say, if I could put that right. And during the COVID season or during the COVID pandemic, Sir started his journey of becoming an author. He began to write a novel. And he's the author of Low Love, The Valley of Love, if I'm getting that word right. He's a wonderful YouTube, YouTuber, as I could just put that right, a wonderful YouTuber writing his own content and making wonderful videos. Guess about what? About the beautiful place called as Kashmir, about how the history of Kashmir originated and all of that. That's really nice. And I'm so happy and proud to be connected today with Vijay sir. So has completed almost 39 episodes of the same under the Kashmiri Hityas. That's really nice. Sir has a lovely dream, like all of us do have, to live in our home homeland. That is the place where we were born and brought up. That is Kashmir. He loves to live in Kashmir and spend the rest of his life in peace. He doesn't want to be away from the land that he loves that much in his own country. So let's get to know more about this wonderful person's journey today. And I'm really excited and I'm really eager to know as to how and why Sir is in Madhya Pradesh and why not in Kashmir, the land he loves and that is close to his heart. Over to you, Sir. How would you define yourself, Vijay Sir, for all of us? Well, Andrea, good evening to you and to all people who are listening to us or who will be listening to us. And very well said that why I am in Indore, not in my land of uh, where I belong to. So I will definitely answer your question because uh, the answer is not yet out. 
it is still to be answered. And uh, we are waiting for the answer from the government of India. Anyways, I will put the journey right from my place of origin, that's Kashmir, where I was born. So it was a lovely place. It is a lovely place, rather. And uh, I was born there. So my half of my life, I have spent in Kashmir. And now half of my life, that is around, I'm 50 plus right now. So 22, 23 years I spent in Kashmir and uh, rest of the life I have spent outside the Kashmir. So that is my journey in total. But as you said, I'm writing on the Kashmir Itihas. That's right, because that's the love for my place. And uh, I'm at the very outset. First, I should have uh, ex uh, expressed myself that I'm gratified to be in your company, Andrea. So nice of you to have me in your show. Thank you. Thank you, sir, so much. Thank you for being so humble and taking out the time on special request. You are here with us. Uh, we'd love to know more about your journey. It's really very painful when you are uprooted from the place where you belong. So this is quite tough for each one of us. You've been through that process. If you'd like to share about it, if you're comfortable with sharing as to what happened and how all things, you know, turned upside down for you, where you had to leave the place of your birth, the place that you love so much and move to another part of India, that is Madhya Pradesh, Indore for the present. Yeah, uh, actually, the whole episode started in the year 1990. January. So all of a sudden, before that, there were some uh, incidents which definitely uh, told us that there, something is happening. But it was not rampant. But suddenly, an outburst of the people who were very heinous in their acts. They had a motivation of eliminating a certain society of ours or just forcing us to leave the places, leave our homes. And that's how it began. It started with the provocation of Pakistan to the elements who were fundamental Islamists in Kashmir. And it proved a totally, uh, you can say, uh, uh, it was a very harsh thing for us. And we were under such an agony that we were inflicted with so many things. It's very hard to express them. Uh, it's really difficult because most of our known people, most of my relatives, they have lost their valuable life just for nothing, just for nothing. And the killing was not normal. It was a brutal killing. And it was to the suffering of the humankind and no one paid any attention to it. No one paid any heed to it. Even the central government was a new step spectator at that time. As on now, the things have changed, but almost all things are almost all same. What we saw there, then and there, and what the things are right now in Kashmir, they have settled for a moment, but some incidents that is some uh, you can say isolated incidents still happen there and that is why i'm out of kashmir not i only my family and my whole community is out of kashmir and we are out of kashmir that is we have been forced for the exodus for the last 35 years for the last 35 years we are not able to visit our homes properly. We go there as a visitor. We are welcome there as a visitor, you know. They welcome us. But if we go to settle there again, then we become the soft targets for them. And no government of India or the state has any solution for it. The people know the solution. The people have the solution. But the government is not ready to walk the talk on that matter. So we have a our own social organization and a political organization that is claiming or that is just that just wants that we should have a separate homeland for Kashmiri Hindus and even for the minorities that is Sikhs and the Christians that who are peaceful community who can live 
separately in Kashmir and that's create one more union territory there. But the government of India at present is not interested in such things. Maybe in future they will have to walk on that talk for sure because that's the only solution that's possible. See, we we go there. I have I have friends here. I go to their homes. It's not a problem. The problem is the trust deficit, the perfidious nature of the people, certain people there that really has created the trust deficit. And we are not in a position to just venture again and that too at the cost of our lives. Now, it was a very painful exercise when we left our homes from the valley and we came to the hot plains, hot northern plains. Then we slowly moved to Hyderabad, Bangalore, even to Chennai and Pune, of course, and Delhi, right? But Jammu is the next station for Kashmiri Pandits. And next is Delhi and then others follow Pune, Bangalore, Hyderabad and other places, even up to Chennai. But you, I will tell you, it's a totally, it pulls apart climate. That is what we experience in the hot plains in the this part of India. There, it's totally different climate. So a climate was also a test for us. And most of the people, you will be surprised to know, most of the people come to that. They they were uh, victims of the weather. They were victims of the harsh climate, that is the uh, heat and the hot climate. And so, uh, we, we we used to sleep in Kashmir on the floors. We never used to sleep on the beds. Beds were there, but in Kashmir, uh, there there's a, uh, you can say culture. We sleep on the floors. That fl floor is well carpeted. It's not a plain floor. That is well carpeted, well furnished floor. In Jammu and other places, when we slept on the floors, you you will be again surprised to know, the viewers will be surprised to know that some of our elders were bitten by scorpions and the snakes. There were some scorpion and snake bites, which also proved, uh, again, a fatality for the community. And we lost lives in Kashmir because of the terrorism. We lost lives in other parts of India because of weather and harsh climate. So we have suffered a lot, but my community never picked up the gun to give the answer. We picked up the knowledge, that's the education, and we went with it and just that's how the journey began. And all of us nowadays, we are settled in different parts of India. The whole India belongs to us, but you know, Andrea, to be away from home is a very difficult thing. It really, it really is an emotional issue. And uh, if you don't go, go to your ancestral home for years together, see the feeling. What will, what will you go through? You will be a homesick person and nostalgia will, uh, will occur in your mind. And it's very difficult. And we have been going through this nostalgia for the last 35 years. So in brief, I tried to tell you the whole story because I didn't want to indulge because a lot of things are known to the people at large because Kashmir Files has come, the movie, they have seen how the killing was so brutal, so heinous in nature that even mankind uh, would have been a shameful uh, thing of a sort that such killings are never expected in a civil society, but we experience that. It's really difficult to say how the dead bodies were cut into pieces and the eyes gorged out. Oh, it's really difficult to say anything. Those are really, those are the criminals and those are from the criminal bent of mind, those people who just want their things in their own way and the society at large, I must say, the society at large supports them silently.
because they also fear their lives. Most, most fear their lives. If they speak against them, then they too will lose their life. So the story goes on and I'm in Madhya Pradesh right now. And that's the journey of my life so far as far as professional uh, background is concerned or the professional journey is concerned. Yes, I did MBA. Then I started as an advertising executive in Pune. And then I came down to Indore where I settled forever. And then I started my career giving consultancy to a financial company because I had a bent of mind for uh, finance. Then later on, uh, I, I have been, you, I, 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 I'll tell you about myself. I have been experimenting myself always. Uh, that is, I put myself to experiments. So a challenge, a uh, herbal company approached for some promotional activity and I joined that company. And I was one of their managers. Later, I joined the allopathic medicine company as a manager and had a lot of time in pharmaceutical companies. Then all of a sudden, I thought I should now stop it because my creative mind, I told you, I have been always experimenting with myself. So uh, people like me are very few, I tell you honestly. I don't want to stick to one thing. I want to do many things in my life, in a short span of life, whatever the God has given me. I want to do many things in this life. And I know if I continue in the same, I may be professionally very high or I may achieve heights in profession, but I will not do what my inner soul is telling me. I have a creative mind. So I keep on writing, I keep on making contents, I keep on speaking, that's it. And when the corona pandemic struck the world, it gave, it was a horrible situation. It was horrible for everyone, but it was also an opportunity for some people, not all, like me, who I, where I could discover myself as an author or writer. So I took to writing and then I wrote a book, Lulab. Lulab is a valley within Kashmir. So Lulab, the valley of love. But the story that the novel story is not about Kashmir. It's a suspense thriller. I didn't want to touch the Kashmir story again and again because most of the things have been written and people know about it. So I don't want to repeat the same thing what others have been saying because I don't believe in repeating the things. I want to do something extra, something new. And to be honest now, uh, I will come down later on uh, what things I'm experimenting and what things I'm thinking in myself about the education system in India. But that's a later on segment right now. And then after writing that book, I'm coming coming down to my professional journey. Right after writing that book, then I started writing the Kashmir Etehasa. So, because I came to know that while reading the books, that Kashmir has an Etehasa of more than five thousand years. Kashmir was not born in 1947 or in 1900s or 1800s. It was five thousand years back. And the creator of Kashmir was Rishi Kashyap. On Rishi Kashyap's name, the Kashmir has been given the name. So, Kash means Kashyap and Mir means the place surrounded by the mountains and the rivers. So, that's the serenity of that place. And now, regarding the Kashmir Itihasa, the history of Kashmir, I started with episode one starting 5,000 years back. Now I am in the almost all 12th century right now. So you can see the journey of Kashmir Etihasa from 5,000 years to 12th century, almost all 4,300 years or 200 years I have covered so far in 39 episodes. Now more episodes will follow after this because I will take this Kashmir Etihasa till 1947 and then to up to article, abrogation of Article 370 on 
August 5, 2019. Till that, I will cover the whole episodes of Kashmir Itihasa under this channel. It is my endeavor to give the people a proper picture about Kashmir. So that's what it is. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing all those experiences that you've had, the good and bad experiences that you've been facing in Kashmir and how you've resettled, relocated again in Madhya Pradesh, Indore, and your stint in the uh, you know, healthcare sector as a person uh, who is interested in writing, being an author and all of that. Now, sir, I'd like to take you on the next question, go on the next journey. Like, what inspired you to begin this writing journey? What was within you? Like, why do you, do you feel the urge and need to write, write and, you know, create work? You are a creator, content creator. What is that urge within you to share with others? Like, when did yeah. this begin? Did it begin just now after COVID or during COVID or did this germinate in your mind much earlier? Yeah, you have touched a beautiful thing. See, Andrea, uh, life never gave me a chance to vent my creative feelings because when we left Kashmir, I was on the threshold of doing a job, right? Because it was a question of survival for me. So the creativity part took the back seat in my life. And my front seat was how to run myself and my family. So it was a huge responsibility. And we were a business family. We had nothing. We were not a salaried family, a salaried class family. So it was a question of earning money and having two square of meals a day. It was like that. That's how I started my journey. So it was not an easy journey for me, to be honest now. Uh, so I, if I, if I have my meals today, I, am, I was not sure at that time whether I could have my meals tomorrow also. That was the journey. So the creative part of mine took the back seat and I was just forced to do the other things because life never gave me that chance. But now, since I have grown big, whatever things I could have accumulated for my family and for myself, I thought it's better to stop here and now discover myself because I want to discover myself. And COVID gave me that chance, but this creativity was within me from my childhood. I was a very creative person in my childhood and that thing stopped with the infiltration of the terrorists because I, at that time I was almost all 19 years old. Then, you know, for a 19 year old or 20 year old boy, it was very difficult to, uh, then Q went to the feelings, what he has already in the mind. And in, and at the same time, my father also expired. Right. In 1989, my father expired. And in 1990, we were forced to leave our homes. So it was a catastrophe for us. So a really, really horrible situation. I told you that it was not an easy journey. Others would not have survived in such such situations because we were not used to such harsh climate also, as I told you earlier. Anyways, we survived and we had that sanskaras with, within us, those values, those virtues within us that really, that really created the person who am I today and uh, the person who is speaking to you right now. And I'm grateful to him that he has really been very kind and blessed me with my inner thinking after a long time, but he has given me that. That is the creative path. At the age of 50, I discovered myself that I should stick to now creative writing. So that's how the creative person emerged out of me. It was already there. It was in the slumber. So that you can see. 
that's wonderful sir to again re uh, find yourself you know get to understand as to what you really need and bring out the creativity that is within you that you're gifted with that's wonderful now sir let's talk about the food like was there an adjustment with food when you had to move from one state to another from your hometown to another city in india i'm sure you might have faced a lot of uh, you know uh, clashes <laughs> yeah. with the food on your with the food on your plate so how yeah. did you deal with that what is the special food of kashmir and all of that if you could share yeah with yeah to be honest uh, i let me tell you we are kashmiri pandits but most of the kashmiri pandits most of the kashmir i don't say all most of the kashmiri pandits are non vegetarians right so uh, in northern india most people are vegetarians and again we have common things to, uh, which we can share with the south southern part of india that is we are also rice eaters right uh, we used to take rotis or chapatis or bread in our breakfast only not uh, two time meal that is lunch and dinner used to be rice basically the primary uh, meal was rice so it was a very difficult thing for us to adjust and most of the things then we knew how to live as you, there's this old saying live in rome as romans do so <laughs> we had to adjust ourselves like that and that's how we uh, the food yeah of course the uh, the preparation of the food of kashmir or yeah, i i will say it is very delicious and the food is ultimate there is no doubt about that the non vegetarian preparations are wonderful class apart and there is not only one there are multiple uh, varieties or cuisines that are served on a platter in kashmir Uh, there's uh, that thing is called vazwan vazwan is a very famous thing of kashmir and vazwan used to be the whole food that is the varieties of mutton and some vegetables and the sweet dish to be followed was totally made under a chef or a cook who was master and with his other team and that that is really wonderful and we still have people who really relish it in indore also because we have certain restaurants now who are serving this kashmiri non veg or kashmiri uh, you can say uh, food to the people and most of the people like the taste uh, uh, see hyderabad biryani is famous but we have a kashmiri pulao which is very famous it's a vegetarian pulao but it's a sweet pulao of kashmiri hindus it's very famous kashmiri pulao is there and other things are also there to name and uh, most of uh, the ve- vegetarian food is basically be- based on the cheese so we have a lot of cheese preparation also that cottage cheese paneer what we say so cottage cheese uh, yeah we cook and a lot of varieties are there and other vegetables also that's right. and rajma chawal is a famous uh, thing uh, which even the southern part of india also likes and even the whole world even the mexicans are al- also it is one of their best cuisines rajma chawal i don't know what mexicans say but i have heard and i have seen the videos taking rajma chawal in a different way but rajma chawal is one of the best things to have right thank you wonderful sir thank you for sharing all of those beautiful memories and uh, when you were talking you know you were talking about the delicious food that kashmir uh, is having authentic preparation and you've mentioned a few names connected to kashmiri food and that's really nice and ha- thankfully it's available even in indore in a few restaurants you also mentioned that right now sir have you got a chance to leave india and cross indian borders and visit other countries as a tourist or on work no never 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 uh but <laughs> to be honest now i never got a chance but uh i'm very fond of ge- geography so a uh, lot of geopolitics whatever is happening i'm fond of politics also so a lot of geopolitics whatever is happening around the world i keep an eye eye on that and i have my own analysis about it so i'm fond of it but i never traveled to any country outside yes 
Thank you for sharing that. Now, sir, I ask you a question based on freedom. What does freedom mean to you? Because you have missed out on the freedom that is the birthright that you have to live in the place where you were born. Now, what does freedom mean to you today? Yeah. See, uh, freedom is a big thing to say. Uh, it is a generic term, uh, freedom. Freedom is what? Uh, a person in GNU shouting, uh, Kashmir mange azadi. That's also freedom, right? And uh, Bharat tere tukde honge, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's also freedom for some people. But for a thinking person, I will say my freedom stops where at my arm's length. That's when it touches the other person. My freedom is up to that extent only. A person who understands this concept, he will never cry over a rooftop and ask for certain things which are anti-national. But freedom, yeah, of course, I would like to be free like birds, wherever I could fly and uh, see the things myself. And yeah, but my freedom should not be an obstacle for others also. That's what I mean by freedom. And yeah, we are, I'm enjoying freedom. Uh, India is a free country, <laughs> democratic um, uh, country. So a lot of things happen on day-to-day -day basis, on political front, on social front, on financial front, on economic front, and on agriculture front also, the Kisan Andolan, the ag agriculturists uh, that are revolt. So a lot of things happen. That is their freedom. But they should not have pulled the tractors to the red foot. That's not the freedom. They should not have blocked the road. That's not the freedom. Freedom is, even I tell you, Supreme Court doesn't have the guidelines. They say openly in the courts, I have seen some chief justice or the justice of Supreme Court saying it's, an, it's a criticism. It's not a just, I'm, I'm not passing any judgment on their judgments. It's a criticism. They say we won't consider any thing if the people don't hit the streets. So for anything to happen or for anything to just make it happen, the people have to hit the streets. It is unthinkable. How come a disorder of this sort can take place and a country uh, will be in a bedlam? You know, a chaos will be there. A chaotic situation will always keep the country in turmoil and we will face some economic hardships. And that's what we have been facing. Otherwise, India would have been, again, a very progressing country. And the poverty would have been eradicated way back. But people hitting the streets, blocking the roads, right, and uh, just uh, going for the stone pelting and some incidents where they have burned the buildings also, right? They have set fire on uh, fire uh, the government buildings, the government property. It is the taxpayer's money. Ignorant, then he is a menace to the society. So being ignorant is really a problem. So we have almost all, most of the things happening in the world followed by some ideology, it is ignorance, total ignorance. So that's what I sum it up. Yes. Now, sir, we'll talk about forgiveness. Like each one of us should be able to forgive and forget. That's what all the holy scriptures in all religions proclaim. Now, how much importance does forgiveness have in your life? Are you able to forgive? people in your life easily or it takes quite a while for you to forgive people. See, we are not superhumans that we will forgive at the nick of the time, anyone. It takes time. It takes its time, right? Uh, so, I believe in the concept of karma. So, karma goes on, right? If somebody has hurt me, I'm, at the time, I'm in a state of anger or frustration but later on, I don't want to just uh, make him feel apologetic also at the same time. But time is the best healer. 
or if I have hurt someone, I will definitely be apologetic to him. I say sorry. Saying sorry is not a bad thing, and because you you should feel sorry when you have you know it, it's the wrong thing. So forgiveness, yeah, definitely, is a huge thing. We should be able to forgive. That's why I told you, uh, I do the people who have thrown us out of our homes. I have not forgiven them for the reason they have killed the people, but I have uh, that they don't occupy my mind space because I'm not thinking on them. I'm thinking on my community. I'm not, because if I think on them, then the negativity will start. I don't want to give room to negativity in my mind. Forgiveness can be when you neglect or when you ignore a person for certain reasons, that's also a forgiveness for me. I mean to say, I'm not a superhuman that, oh, I have forgiven you. You may be blessed now. <laughs> I'm not that superhuman also. Uh, being human, yeah, whatever best possible thing I can do, I'll definitely do that. But I will not hurt someone. That's for sure. Yes. Thank you, sir, for sharing that. Thank you for being very honest and genuine on that answer as well. Now, sir, like we go to the next question. Now, if given a chance to come on a national or international platform, with a live audience in front of you and speak and motivate people to be the better versions of themselves or the better version of themselves, to keep that right, would you take up the opportunity immediately? Oh, I would like to take it up, but I, I, I will not be a repeater. I will not try to emulate someone. I will not try to copy someone who has been a motivational speaker for such reasons. My my motivation would be through my own experiences and whatever the thinking process is in my mind. I would definitely give vent to my feelings. And as I told you, I'm a thinker. There's no doubt about that. I'm a thinker. I think on each and every subject. I think on social issues. I think on each and every issue. I think on family issues. Definitely, I would be an immediate starter if any opportunity comes my way. Thank you. Yes, I'd love to see you speaking uh, at a, you know, a, a place where there are live audience and people really understand as to how pain changes a person, how pain could be traumatic and how one should be more kind and loving towards each other. And, you know, one another, you could say, if I could put that right, one another towards each other and towards one another also. Now, so uh, we'd like to know any of the experiences or any incident that you remember that happened during your childhood as a student. What kind of a child was Vijay? Was he the naughty one or a very, you know, shy child or a, the most mischievous one? How? What kind of a child were you in school? Uh, I was sort of a mixture of all. Uh, I, I put myself as a mixture of all. I was a shy person, but at times I used to be bold also. I would take up the challenges. I used to hesitate a bit, but when given a podium, I would really speak. I get nervous. I used to get nervous in my first attempts when I used to face an audience. Now it's not like that. Uh, I I think they are part of me now. Now and again, yeah, being naughty is not bad. I was naughty, but not that too naughty. Uh, I was never a naughty. I was almost all self-disciplined person. Nobody taught me discipline. Yeah, parents used to teach me, or the teachers in school used to teach us. But my self-discipline used to tell me, if, see, I remember an incident. See, being passionate uh, to others, it's a lovely thing to happen, right? For animals, for other people. I remember an incident I was carrying, in my childhood, I was carrying some high rupees in my pocket. It was a big thing at that time. I'm talking about uh, 1975, 76, 77, like that. 1977, I was a small boy at the time, a uh, boy of uh, nine, ten years, right? So, when I was just walking on the roadside in Srinagar, I met an old lady who told me that I have not eaten anything. I was so emotional. I just... Uh, Pluck, I just uh, showed that money. I just uh, gave that money to that old lady without knowing that I have to get something uh, for myself also. 
So I gave all the money to her. Five rupees was a big thing at the time. So I'm not, I'm not trying to be very great about this incident, but that was the sort of person what I am, right? I, whatever I have, I will try to give it. Second, but now uh, the life has taught me only give that much what you can afford. Don't try to give everything. And that's what life taught me in the later stages. <laughs> uh, being simple, right? It doesn't uh, require any rocket science. Second, yeah. Now, uh, one thing I would like to uh, tell you about being socially aware. Once uh, the some 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 of my childhood friends and myself were walking down the street, and I saw a running tap. It was running, and the water was totally going waste. It was going into the drain. It was a drinking water. I stopped and put off that tap. Somehow, the school principal saw it. It was just, I didn't try to impress anyone. I was never knowing that the school principal is also there at some distance. But he saw that incident and he didn't tell me anything. But next day morning, assembly session, he declared or he announced that such should be the morality that this, they were three or we were four or five friends walking but this is the bo a boy who just uh, put off the tap so that is the morality we should not waste water that gave me motivation and still i am like that today i will never run the running tap uh, if i'm not doing any work with it so i will try to put it off i will advise my maids housemates also don't waste water some people Tell me you're a miser. I say, fine, you call me miser. I will like it. It's an, it's an accolade for me. It's, these are applause for me because I'm doing for this cause. Thank you. Yes, sir. thank you for sharing those beautiful incidents, sir. Thank you very much. I could visualize the little boy closing the tap. You know, I could visualize that. That's really very nice. Thank you so much. Now, sir, what about pets? Do you love pets as well? Are you a person who gives importance to pets or pets are a big no for you? See, pets, yeah. I love pets. I love pets. There's no doubt about it. But at the same time, uh, I tell people, see, I'm a thinker. I told you, I will also give my thinking for this uh, statement also that we should keep pets only if we can afford them. Effort does Effort means if we can give them better place. We have small flats now. We have two BHK or three BHK flats now. And keeping a pet in that place is not advisable. It's not advisable. Uh, and keeping a pet, yeah, just if you are a pet lover, then give that care to the street dogs. Don't let them into your flats because it's a small place uh, for them to live. Give, give that lovely care to them uh, and be passionate for them. It's also a good thing to do. And second, I don't like people keeping pet birds in their homes, in their in the cages. Their place doesn't belong here. I feel so awkward and so frustrated at times. How do people do this? Some say it's a singing bird. It's a these are some loving birds and all that. God, she must be somewhere hanging in the trees why you are keeping her in the cage that's what i feel at times so i'm a pet lover but for the other reasons not for just be very selfish about them that i will owe them no not like that i will definitely give my services to them thank you yes this speaks of great freedom that is in your mind i understand that you love freedom and you love to see even birds and animals being free and given their due respect for That's being right. created. That's, right. That's wonderful. Now, sir, uh, before we sum up the session, there are two to three questions that I'd like to go ahead with. I would like you to share your favorite quotation. Which quote appeals to your heart the most? Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, there are so many things, but uh, one thing is, I have still miles to go like that uh, before I sleep. So 
uh, I'm not remembering the exact quotation. Uh, I don't know who, whose quote it is, but the thing is that I have many tasks to do before I really leave this world. So that's the quotation. And there are n number of quotations uh, which really affect me, but this one, it really touches my heart. And wonderful, sir. That's really very, very nice of sharing that beautiful quote with us. In fact, it is uh, Jawaharlal Nehru who had oh, yeah. these beautiful lines written on his, uh, you know, a table and See, it was placed on his table. It was written and it was placed on his table. So every now and then he used to read this. And I, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it is Robert Frost who had penned yeah. this wonderful poem. It there are still miles sleep. to go before I sleep like that, right? I don't uh, uh, just uh, remember the exact uh, quote, but it's like that. And Nehru, yeah, see, I'm I'm not an ardent lover of Nehru or Nehru's philosophy, but definitely he too was a Kashmiri, but a different Kashmiri. He was a Kashmiri pundit, but <laughs> uh, he played havoc with the Kashmir uh, policy. Uh, he he really. Uh, uh, I will say he he evolved the situation where we are today. So I'm not blaming him. I'm blaming that time, how he did it, being Kashmiri himself. I don't know. Uh, so he did did it. But yeah, he was a wonderful a writer. There's no doubt about that. And uh, he was a wonderful, I don't know whether he was a speaker or not, but writer, yeah, there are a number of books of his. And people are reading it. Yes. Thank you, sir, for sharing your thoughts on that. Thank you so much. Now, sir, if given a chance, imagine you have a time machine in your hand. It's an imaginary question. Imagine a time machine is given to you by us. We ask you to click the button that is visible in red and you are immediately taken into the past era and your task is to live, relive somebody's life and return back. If this was the task, whose life you'd love to relive and return back? Uh -huh. Right. I would definitely like to relive the uh, life of uh, Lalita Ditya. Uh, Lalita Ditya was a great king of Kashmir. So definitely his life. He was a, he was a conqueror, but he was not inhuman. He was a conqueror. He had expanded his ro uh, rule up to southern parts of India and even up to Caspian Sea, that is up to Turkey. But he never converted anyone. He never converted anyone. But, and he was a great human being also. So like that, uh, uh, I would like to live his life. Wonderful. So that's really nice. His, Thank you. His, the great king's name is Lalita Ditya Mukta Pira. Thank you for sharing his entire name. Thank you so much. I'm hearing it for the first time. Thank you for sharing and increasing our knowledge oh, of that. Uh, to, to add something more to this, he is called the Alexander of India or Bharat. Yes. He's known by Alexander of India also. Yes. Thank you, sir, for sharing. Thank you. Now, sir, one fine day, each one of us have to leave this earth. We're going to leave this earth. All of us, it's imminent for all of us to just live. It's a temporary journey. And then we have to just say goodbye to all and leave the space. So Absolutely. when we are no more on this earth, how would you want people to remember Vijay Pandey? Uh, not me as a person, but for my work, for my deeds, which still I have not started, but I really want to do something for the community, for the cause of Kashmir, definitely for that reason, for the world, not as a person that Vijay Pandita was a great person or something like that, or I'm a common person. See, uh, I, as you said, a celebrity, I would like to term myself as a guest than a celebrity because I'm not, a, I'm no more a big celebrity like others, but definitely if I know that I'm different from others, that makes me a celebrity in my own capacity. But Very I, uh, I know that, but I don't have to get, I don't have to make it known to people that I'm a big person or like that. It's a bad thing too. Uh, but one thing, yeah, for sure, I'd like to be a common person, known as a common person. But for my work, absolutely, I would like to be remembered. 
wonderfully, brilliantly answered. I like the answer. Thank so, you, Andrea. Yeah, thank you, sir. Now, so one major question before we sum up. I'd like you to share your thoughts on mental health. Now, you've been through a lot of trauma, so you know what is it, what is depression, what is anxiety and all of that. So to what extent are we today on the right track with regard to mental health? Each one of us. Yeah, see, uh, I will try to explain on this mental health situation. People, when they take a lot of stress, there is every chance that they may be prone to men mental health diseases, right? And people are like that, right? So going to the extremes, going to the extremes in thinking, it's, it really affects your mental health. Yeah. About mental health, if you want to be a sound mental person with a sound health, then you have to be, you have to define yourself, think in, not think in the extreme point of view, but think on the rational point of view. If we think on the rational point of view, then I think most of our mental health issues would be sorted out. And we will not have to pay visits to the doctors. I have seen a lot of people paying visits to the doctors. Uh, at the, it's a uh, Frankenstein monster they create, then they visit the doctor to remove or to get it eradicated. Doctor doesn't eradicate or doc doctor doesn't eliminate any Frankenstein monster. It gives you, the doctor gives you a sleeping pill that's tranquilizer, that is a sedation pill that makes you sleep for some time, then you are again awake or it curbs your mind, the working mind for some time when you're on that pills, it's really disturbing and you may turn to be a mental patient for sure. So I will just not advise people. I will suggest people because I can't advise people. Really? I'm not a big person. I can suggest people that don't think on extremes. Think on the rationale. That will definitely be a cure for you. That's for sure. Wonderful, sir. So you suggest that each one of us should be uh, a rational thinker, should think on the right lines or the right wavelength we should be right not in too extreme uh, not at the extreme level or not even like you know uh yeah the other end uh, right yeah the uh, end of the spectrum yes. right yes. yeah uh, at, at the <laughs> right at the first end that's where it starts so not at the low end not at the high end right. that's what we should be balanced in thinking we should know the pros and cons of any action or any statement or anything that's what makes us a healthy person. And that's a sign of a healthy brain also. If we think, no, I'm right person, I'm always right, then it's a problem. Very true. Very true, sir. It was really an exciting and, and uh, you know, uh, if I could put that right, like I'm just stuck for words. It was really a very uh, emotional session with you. And because, you know, you, you took us deep into the your life that you, your early life and your present life as well, the ups and downs that you faced. It's quite emotional for one to undergo all of this and to share it and to create awareness. You've done that very well. You put yourself across in a very dignified way. I really appreciate that, sir. Now, towards the end, I have just a small request. I would like you to give us three gifts in the form of three beautiful words, which we could really you know, focus on and build a beautiful life. What are those three words that always come to your mind quickly? What that is, yes, sir. Over to Satyam Shivam Sundaram. God is beautiful. That's it. Wow, that's really nice. You were just ready on it, you didn't take even a moment to think and you know to just think and then share something. You just had it at the tip of your tongue. Satyam Shivam Sundaram. God is beautiful. God is beautiful. Right. Wonderful. Thank you so much, sir. We look forward to another session with you in the near future as well. We wish you a lot of happiness and peace. And not only for you, we wish it for every individual on this earth. Let everyone live in peace and let there be balance and harmony across the entire universe. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Andrea, for being with you. Thank you. It was really a wonderful session. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. My dear friends, with this, we'd like to sum up the session for today. Thank you so much for being with us. We'd like to thank all our guests and viewers as well. Do us a favor, share this video with the right kind of people. And my dear friends, 
Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment. If you like what the International Fab Talks is doing, be connected with us. And don't forget to love yourself and don't forget to create a beautiful environment around you. Live and let live. That's what I'd like to share from the International Fab Talks. You live, let others also live in peace. Stay safe, stay blessed. Signing off.